like to welcome you to the festival of Pentecost as we celebrate God's blessing and the giving of the Holy Spirit uh, this morning. Uh, Jesus called the uh, Holy Spirit a helper, a paraclete in uh, Greek. And um, basically what, he, what he's saying is that somebody is going to come along and help us do what God wants us to do. A little bit like Peter when he goes to the temple and he sees the man lame and he says, silver and gold I have uh, none, but what I do have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Get up and get out of here. And, uh, and it's, it's serving God in that way, but the uh, Holy Spirit is more than that. When, he, when the Greek says a paraclete, it's an ar- a Roman army term. And a paraclete was your buddy in the, in the military. And when you went into battle, you stood back to back. And when you uh, stood guard at night, you both stood guard looking in opposite directions. And one would look while the other one slept for a little while. And then the other one. Basically, the paraclete was the one who has your back. And that's what the Holy Spirit becomes as we celebrate Pentecost. The one who has our back. When life gets hard, he's there to protect us and keep us in the faith. And so today we celebrate uh, the, um, the, uh, the Holy Spirit. And if I can keep my teeth out of my uh, tongue out of my eye teeth, I'll do much better. But anyway, we celebrate the Holy Spirit that God sends to us to encourage us and to protect us. So as we do that, let us begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, the things we have done and the things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Holy Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sin. As a called and ordained servant of the word, it is my delight to announce that this forgiveness is ours in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Here is the first lesson for Pentecost Sunday. It comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. Time now for the Holy Spirit. On that first day of Pentecost, seven weeks after Jesus' resurrection, the believers were gathered together in one place. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were meeting. Then what looked like tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. Everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them ability. Godly Jews from many nations were in Jerusalem at that time. When they heard the sound, they came running to see what it was all about, and they were bewildered, hearing their own languages being spoken by the believers. Beside themselves with wonder, they exclaimed, How can this be? These men are from Galilee, yet we hear them speaking in our native languages. Here we are, Parthians, Alamites, Medes, people from Mesopotamia, Cappadocia, Judea, Pontus, and providences of Asia, Pergian, Pamphylia, Egypt, and areas of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabians. And we hear these people speaking in our own native tongues about the wonderful things God has done. They stood there amazed and perplexed. What can this mean? they asked each other. But others in the crowd were mocking. They're just drunk, they said. 
Then Peter stepped forward with the eleven other apostles and shouted at the crowd, Listen carefully, all of you, fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem. Make no mistake about this. Some of you are saying we must be drunk. But that's not true. It's not even nine o'clock in the morning. No, what you are witnessing here was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. In these last days, God said, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. In those days I will pour out my spirits among all my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. And I will cause wonders in heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before that great and wonderful day the Lord arrives. And everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Here ends the first lesson of Pentecost Sunday. Our second lesson comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 3 through 13. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. There are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are acted by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all of the members of the body, though many, are of one body. So it is with Christ. For in one spirit we are all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free. And we're all made to drink of one spirit. This ends our second lesson. Now, hear the gospel. Gospel lesson for this Pentecost Sunday is taken from the Gospel uh, according to St. John in 7th chapter beginning in the 37th verse. On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. And now he said this about the Spirit, which believers in him were to receive, for as yet there was no Spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we thank you for this time to gather, to hear your word, and may your Spirit work through that word as it draws us closer to you and prepares us for the ministry you have planned in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the Judaic world, there were three main festivals to be celebrated, preferably in Jerusalem. There was Passover, which uh, we're familiar with, or the Feast of the Unleavened Bread, to remind them of their freedom from slavery and how the angel of death had passed over their homes, by, pushed back by the blood of the Lamb. And it was celebrated with a special sacrifice and a meal. And the Orthodox Hebrew also celebrated what was called the Feast of Booths, or Tabernacles. According to Alfred Adersheim, it was a seven-day festival after the harvest to celebrate God's blessings and to remember how God cared for the Jews when they were nomads in the wilderness. The people would build temporary shelters throughout the city, 
reminiscent of the structures used during their wilderness wanderings. And then on the last day of the festival, everyone would gather at the temple. The priest would carry a golden pitcher and lead the group to the pool at Siloam for the water of the living spring, or water that had not been touched by man. And then the priest would return to the temple with this living water. He would pour it at the base of the altar, symbolizing the water that came from the rock. And a voice would cry out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, rivers of living water, shall flow from within him. And finally, there was the Feast of of, uh, Weeks, or what we call Pentecost, a time of thanksgiving for the fruits of the first harvest, later associated with the remembrance of the law given by God. But what is interesting is all three of those festivals were designed to remind the people when they were wanderers and how God had provided, even giving them a home to grow their wheat. But all threes had traditions or visual helps so that the people could better remember it by seeing what they had taken place and to help them celebrate what God had done for them. And like the ancient Hebrews, the Christian church also has three main festivals, Christmas, Easter, and Pentecost. And we also have things to help us visualize and remember what God has done for us. For instance, at Christmas time, it's the gifts given. And we celebrate by giving gifts the incarnation as God's gift to the world. At Easter, we celebrate with an egg. We color eggs. Because eggs, once they're broken, cannot be made whole again. And it's to remind us that when Jesus broke the tomb, it could never be whole again. And it was a time when we anticipate hearing the message of the angels, he is not here, he is risen. But Pentecost doesn't seem to be as easy to visualize with a special tradition. It has at times been compared to a stealth bomber uh, that creeps up on us. When a stealth bomber flies over, we look up to where the sound is, not realizing that the bomber is already miles down the road. Pentecost has so many things going on that when we look it's hard to focus on what is really the going on. What can we visualize that can help us to celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit? Well, I'm glad I asked, so because I have a few suggestions. Now, we could be a little bit like a Grateful Dead concert. Everybody could bring one of those propane fire starters and hold it above their heads, reminding them of the tongues of fire which rested on the believers. We might even encourage one another to be on fire for the Lord or to visualize the great wind and experience that. We might put industrial-sized fans around the sanctuary and crank them up to high speed and hang on to our bulletins. Or we could send some of our brothers and sisters to one of the government language schools And then on Pentecost, have them come and give a gospel message in their learned language. We could celebrate that message, even if we couldn't understand what they were saying. But all kidding aside, it seems to me that the reason, the real reason we need to celebrate on Pentecost is a thing we call faith. Faith is what shows us what Pentecost is all about. Imagine it. Peter did a lot better on faith than a Billy Graham ever did in one of his crusades. Luke tells us that 3,000 were added to their number that day. Imagine. Just imagine Pastor Moeller preaching a sermon and 3,000 people would join Good Shepherd in one day. Where would you put them? Well, 
because it's such a large number, maybe it would be better if the number was 300 in one day. Or would we rejoice if it was just 30 or maybe three? No matter what the number, they would all give us reason to rejoice for the faith that the Spirit had given them. Because we know that it had to be the work of the Holy Spirit because no one can call Jesus Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now I don't mean to minimize these amazing things that God did on that first Pentecost. They were all helps for getting the message out. Preparing for the real miracle which was the work of the Holy Spirit. We had an experience about how people have trouble with the work of the Holy Spirit when we had the reading about Paul's in Athens not too long ago. Remember, he was trying to talk to the philosophers about and explain the unknown God, but he, and he talked about things they could understand. First of all, he talked about how God made the world, that he was the maker, not the made, and he was Lord over heaven and earth. Nobody had any problem with that. They were quite comfortable. Then he mentioned life and breath coming from God and how God created all people, nations, and history. Everything was still fine. But when he began to talk about repentance and how that repentance is based on the resurrection, Paul was asked to shut up and leave. But Luke adds a little comment. But others said, we want to hear you again on this subject. There was the miracle of Pentecost being celebrated. Not celebrated by great numbers, but by a curious few who wanted to hear more. Faith and the resurrection. Years ago, a bank in Minnesota wanted a Viking player to be their spokesman. But rather than pick a starter from the team, they decided to interview bench warmers. And they settled on a defensive lineman called Bob Lertzema. You may remember him because he finished his career in Seattle. He was known as bench warmer Bob. But he was not always a bench warmer because Coach Grant would often put him in the game in certain situations. He may have ridden the bench most of the time, but he had to always be ready to enter the game. The miracle of Pentecost celebrates how the Holy Spirit can move us from being bench warmers to being ready to enter the game. Peter was riding the bench while he was hiding behind locked doors, hiding until the Holy Spirit worked its magic. And he went out with a message he was not embarrassed by the message. He was not apologetic for telling the people they had killed the Lord of life. He was not worried how the message would be received. He shrugged off the suggestion that the apostles may have been a little drunk. And he proclaimed that Easter was not a private affair for Jesus and a few of his friends, but his death and resurrection was the beginning of a new age, what he called the last days and in this way when Jesus said it is finished he was proclaiming that God provided everything needed for salvation so that history could move forward to the great and glorious day of the Lord when he would return in his rightful glory it is finished proclaimed that Jesus' death was God's plan of salvation for our sins and his resurrection was our victory dance. It's a simple message, but it is a message, message that God uses to change the world as the Holy Spirit works its magic. And I think it's, it is the simplicity itself that makes the Christian faith a hard faith to believe in. Because I think man likes to be in charge. If you go back to the fall of man in Genesis, the temptation was that by eating the fruit, man could be like God. And history is filled with man's humanity struggle to be their own God. 
to be in control, to set our terms, even in matters of salvation. Because we like to be in charge, we like to make religion something that we have insights into, something that is reserved for the just a few of the spiritual people. But the Holy Spirit reminds us that God is in charge. He did salvation for us, and he kept it simple. Simple for us to believe, and simple for us to trust in faith. Yes, Christmas has the gifts that help us understand God's gift to the world. Easter has the egg to remind us of the empty tomb, but Pentecost has faith celebrated in the lives of God's people. And it is not a celebration reserved for just one day, but it is a continual celebration throughout the year. There was a movie called Shall We Dance? And it tells a story of a successful Chicago lawyer trying to recapture some excitement in his life. He was intelligent. He was good looking. He had a beautiful wife, a comfortable home. But over the years, he had lost the excitement until one day while driving home on the elevated, he saw a dance studio. And on the sly, he went to the studio and signed up for ballroom dancing lessons in order to rekindle the romance in his marriage and take his wife dancing. In the process, he found renewed joy and peace and love for his wife. God provides ways to keep that excitement of Pentecost alive uh, alive all year long in our lives. And it doesn't involve ballroom dancing. It begins as believers come together, come together to be nurtured by the Holy Spirit, to have their faith solidified by the word of God. Remember what it says in Acts where they continued in the apostles' teaching. It comes together in fellowship, Luke called it, but I like to think of it as a good old-fashioned potluck. It comes together with the breaking of bread as we celebrate the Lord's Supper, and it comes together in prayer or worship. They came together, and the Holy Spirit added to their number. Pentecost is the celebration of the continual fruits of God's harvest, and the faith that can change lives. An alcoholic was talking to an old drinking buddy who was trying to understand what faith had done for him, and the man said, it changed beer into furniture for my family. It is a life-changing gift. As we can to celebrate, continue to celebrate what, that God loves us, that God forgives us, that God gives us the gift of eternal life. May the harvest continue in us and may the harvest continue through us to the glory of God our Father. Amen. And may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Would you pray with me? Lord, this Sunday we celebrate how you sent the light of your Holy Spirit among the faithful to enlighten them to the power of your gospel and lead them in service and proclamation of all you have done. By that same spirit, continue to enlighten the hearts of your faithful to know your will and empower us to fulfill that will as we praise you while sharing the hope that is ours in Jesus Christ. By that same spirit, empower and guide the leaders in our lives that they may please you in all things for those who lead in your kingdom, give them the grace to focus on what is important as it regards your Son, our Lord and Savior. For those who lead, it, lead us in the world, supply them with the wisdom that leads to peace and help them lead the nations on the path of your law. Preserve those who travel this weekend, especially bring, we bring to mind Pastor Moeller and his family, Keep them safe as your angels watch over them on their way home. For those of our brothers and sisters with special needs, hear their prayers for help. And if your answer is wait, give them the patience to trust your will. 
We also give you thanks for those who have given the last full measure for our nation and for our communities. We thankfully remember them this weekend. May it be a time of sharing the blessings that have protected and a time of giving thanks for the freedom given through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And as you journey forth today and always, may the Lord watch over you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord continue to look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thanks for joining us on this Pentecost Sunday. Uh, my name is Lawrence Locke. I've been filling in for Pastor Moeller because he's in big sky country. Uh, for the week, and he will be back next week. We really hope he has a safe trip uh, home with his family. And uh, anyway, if you want to find out what's happening here at Good Shepherd, I encourage you to go online and, and to their website and check what their calendar is filled with and uh, join in in the ministry to all the great things happening here. God bless. Have a good week.